I got the horse right here, the name is Paul Revere, and here's a guy that says if the weather's clear, can do, can do, this guy says the horse can do, if he says the horse can do, can do, can do. I'm can going do. Valentine, cause can I'm the born in line. The this guy's guy got him figured out. Do. Five to nine. If he says the horse can do. If he says the horse can do. Can do. Can do. For Paul Revere, I'll bite. I hear his foot's all right. Of course, it all depends if it rains last night. I'm going to Valentine. The morning work looks fine. This means the brother is a friend of mine. If the main voice likes to make box noises, this guy's friend, father, likes to make what poise. Paul Revere, the now this is no bomb stare. It's all my handicap, but that's real class. sincere. I'm can do, says the horse, do. Looks fine. This guy I says the horse can do. But if he says the horse can do, he can do. Can do. Can can do. Can do. this here can in the telegraph. Epitaph. Paul Revere, I got the horse. Swallow, follow the boat, and say no more, say no more, say no more. If you're a sinner and you pray no more, follow, follow the boat. Brothers and sisters, resist the devil and he will flee from you. That is what the Bible tells us. And that is why I am standing here in the devil's own city, on the devil's own street, prepared to do battle with the forces of evil. Hear me, you gamblers, with your dice, your cards, your horses. Pause and think before it is too late. You are in great danger. I am not speaking of the prison and the gallows, but of the greater punishment that awaits you. Repent before it is too late. Just around the corner is our little mission where you are always welcome to seek refuge from this jungle of sin. Come here and talk to me. Do not think of me as Sergeant Sarah Brown, but as Sarah Brown, your sister. Join me in resisting the devil, and we can put him to flight forever. Remember, friends, it is the Save a Soul mission located at 409 West 49th Street, open all day and all night with a special prayer meeting on Thursday. Every day. She has a cannon up again. Poor Miss Sarah. I wonder why a refined doll like her is mixed up in the Mission Dodge. She is a beautiful doll, all right, with 100% eyes. <sighs> it is too bad that such a doll wastes all her time being good. Yeah. <laughs> How can she make any money from that? Maybe she owns a piece of the Mission. Maybe. That could be. Good Never people know. own Mission. They hey, can make money. Benny South Street. Harry the horse, how are you doing? Yeah, you know Nicely Nicely Johnson. Yeah, how goes it? Nicely Nicely, thank you. Yeah. Tell me, uh, what about Nathan Detroit? Has he got a place for his game yet? He hasn't found a place just yet. The heat is on. But he'll find a place. Well, tell him I am loaded and I'm looking for some action. <laughs> just acquired 5,000 potatoes. 5,000 bucks? Tell me, where did you acquire it? I collected the reward on my father. Oh, jeez. You know, everybody's looking for a piece of the action. I just wish Nathan would find Why, a place Lieutenant for the Why, Lieutenant Brannigan, game. Mr. South Street. I, it is Lieutenant Brannigan of the New York Police Department. A pleasure. <laughs> Any of you guys seen Nathan Detroit? Which Nathan Detroit would that be? I mean the Nathan Detroit has been running a floating crap game and been getting away with it by moving into a different spot every night. Uh, why are you telling us this, Your Honor? You know I'm telling you this because you two bums work for Detroit. Rustling up customers for his crap game. We do? Yeah, you do. Well, you can tell him from me. I know right now he's running around trying to find a spot. Well, no one's going to give him a spot because everybody knows Brannigan's breathing down their neck. Fellas! Fellas! I'm having terrible troubles. Everybody's scared on account of that lousy Brannigan, and I can't... <laughs> Something wrong, Mr. Detroit? Hello, Lieutenant. <laughs> I hope you don't think I was talking about you. Uh, 
There are other lousy Brannigans. I've been just speaking to your colleagues about your crap game. I imagine you're having trouble finding a place? Oh, well, the heat is on, as you must know, from the fact that you now have to live on your salary. <laughs> Nathan, have you found a place for the game? What does that cop want from me? What am I, a, a drug dealer? I merely run a crap game for the convenience of those who want a little action. In return for which, I take a small cut. Now, is that a crime? Yeah. But have you found a place for the game? Did you find a place? Did I find a place? Did I? Yes, I found a place. Tomorrow night, we are holding the crap game in the Radio City Music Hall. <gasps> How are you going to fix the ushers? I tried all the regular places. The back of the cigar store, the funeral parlor. Uh, and Nathan, you once said there might be a chance at the Biltmore Garage. I was huh? over to the Biltmore Garage. Spoke to Joey Biltmore himself. He says he might take a chance and let me use the place if I give him a thousand bucks. A thousand bucks? In cash. He won't take my marker. Oh, <laughs> your marker's no good, huh, Nate? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, a marker ain't just a piece of paper that says I owe you one thousand dollars signed Nathan Detroit. Yeah. A marker is a pledge. Mm -hmm which a guy cannot vote on. It's like not saluting the flag. My marker's as good as gold, only Joey Biltmore don't think so. It don't seem possible. Me, without a livelihood. Why, well, I've been running this game ever since I was a juvenile delinquent. But, but Nathan, ain't there something you can do? What can I do? I'm broke. I couldn't even buy Adelaide a present today. And you know what day today is? It is mine and Adelaide's 14th anniversary. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. We've been engaged for 14 years. <sighs> but, Nathan, you need to concentrate on the game. The town is up to here with high players. The Greeks in town. <laughs> and Brandy Bottle Bates. No. And Scranton Slim. I know, I know! I could make a fortune. But where can I have the game? The Biltmore Garage wants a grand, but we ain't got a grand on hand. And they now got a lock on the door of the gym at Public School 84. There's the stock room behind McCluskey's bar. But Mrs. McCluskey ain't a good scout. And things being how they are. The back of the police station is out. Lousy Brannigan. So the Biltmore Garage is the spot. But the 1,000 bucks we ain't got. Why, it's good old reliable Nathan, 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 are Nathan, Nathan Detroit. That's me. If you're looking for action, he'll furnish the spot. Even when the heat is on, it's never too hot. Not for good old reliable Nathan. Where it's always just a short walk to the oldest established permanent floating crap game in New York. There are well heeled shooters everywhere, everywhere. There are well heeled shooters everywhere. And an awful lot of land is for the fellow who can get us there. If we only had a lousy little plan, we could be a millionaire. of your bundle you want to increase. Still arrange that you go broke in quiet and what? peace. In a hideout provided by Nathan, where there are no neighbors to squawk. It's the oldest established permanent floating in New York. Where's the action? Where's the game? Gotta have the game or we'll die from shame. It's the oldest established permanent floating crap game in New York. Gentlemen. Do not worry. Nathan Detroit's crap game will float again. My boys will let you know where it is. Okay, Nathan. Say, you know what? Huh.
Sky Masterson's in town. Sky Masterson? Oh, yeah. Now there is the highest player of them all. Higher than the Greek? Oh, higher than anybody. Yeah. Why do you think they call him Sky? That's how high he bets. Wow. Yeah. I once saw him bet $5,000 on a cockroach. And another time, he was sick and he wouldn't take penicillin on account he had bet 10 C's, his temperature would go to 104. Uh, Did it? No. Did it? He's so lucky, it went to 106. <laughs> Good old Sky. Uh, Nathan, why don't you borrow the thousand from Sky? Oh, no, no, not Sky. With him, that kind of money ain't lending money, it's betting money. Oh. So why don't I bet him? Why don't I bet him a thousand on something? You would bet with Sky Masterson? <laughs> I ain't scared. I am perfectly oh. willing to take the risk, providing I can figure out a bet in which there is no chance of losing. <laughs> He likes crazy bets, like, uh, which lump of sugar will a fly set on, or, or how far can you kick a piece of cheesecake? Ooh, cheesecake! Look! Run into Mindy's restaurant and ask Mindy how many pieces of cheesecake he sold yesterday, and also how many pieces of strudel. How much cheesecake? How much strudel? What do you want to know that for? Just find out. Oh, now beat it. Here comes Adelaide. If she finds out I'm running this craft game again, she will never set foot on me again. <laughs> Adelaide! <laughs> oh, you can go ahead, girls. Order me a tuna fish on rye and, and a chocolate sundae with tomato ketchup and mayonnaise. <laughs> we gotta get back to the hot box. Oh, well, you're still rehearsing? Yeah, that slave driver, Charlie, he's been working us all day. So finally I says, look, Charlie, I'm starving. I gotta get out of here and get me something to eat. And he says, you don't wanna eat. You just wanna sneak out and meet that cheap bum, Nathan Detroit. So what did you say to him? Oh, I told him. I says, I'll meet whoever I want. Well, don't upset yourself. Uh, how's your cold? Oh, uh, it's much better, thank you. <laughs> Nathan, <yeah? laughs> happy anniversary! Oh, a present <laughs> I for hope me! I you like it! <laughs> oh, a belt. <laughs> <laughs> Read the card! Sugar is sweet, and so is jelly. So put this belt around your belly. <laughs> That's so sweet. <laughs> uh, listen, Adelaide, about your present. Um, I was gonna get you a diamond wristwatch with a gold band and, and two rubies on oh, the side. Nathan, you shouldn't have! It's okay, I didn't. Oh. I'm sorry. No, I kinda like it when you forget to buy me presents. It makes me feel like we're married already. <laughs> Don't you worry, honey. One of these days, I'll be in the money, and you'll have more mink than a mink. <laughs> Nathan, darling, I can do without anything, just as long as you don't start running that crap game again. Oh, oh crap game. <laughs> what an absurd thought. <laughs> 1,200 cheesecake, 1,500 strudel. What? Yesterday, Mindy sold 1,200 cheesecake and 1,500 strudel. More strudel than cheesecake? That's great. Nathan, Oh, nothing, honey, nothing. <laughs> hey, any news yet? Uh, not yet, Harry. I'll let you know. What was that about? Uh, his wife's having a baby. So why is he asking you? He's nervous. It's his first wife. Listen, uh, Adelaide, uh, I'm expecting a fella. I know Nathan, you're hungry. are you trying to get rid of me? No, no, no. I just don't want your sandwich to get soggy. Fellas, fellas, take Adelaide to the drugstore. You see, honey, you're sick. It's across the street. Lots of open manholes oh, around. Oh, you're the <laughs> <laughs> you're the sweetest person. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> hey, oh, he. Hey, Masterson. <laughs> Glad to see you, Sky. Nathan, you're on promoter, you. How are you, Sky? You, you look great. Feel great, Nathan. Two wonderful weeks out west of Nevada. Great place, beautiful scenery, helpful climate, and I beat him for 50 G's of blackjack. 50 G's? Uh, you're gonna be in town long? No, flying to Havana tomorrow. Havana? Yes, there's a lot of action down there. You want to come with me? Oh, no, no, no. I got a lot of things to do. In the meantime, how about dropping over to Mindy's for a piece of cheesecake? They sell a lot of cheesecake. No, I'm not hungry. So tell me, uh, how's Adelaide? Oh, fine, fine. She's uh, still dancing at the hot box. <laughs> Suppose one of these days you'll be getting married. 
Well, we all gotta go sometime. <laughs> Ooh, but Nathan, we can fight it. Guys like us, we gotta remember, as pleasant as a doll's company may be, she must always take second place to aces back to back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, um, are you hungry yet? Uh, maybe we could go over to Minnie's and have a piece of cheesecake or strudel or something. No, I think I'll go get the late results. Oh, um, but you will admit that Mindy has the greatest cheesecake in the country. Yes, I am quite partial to Mindy's cheesecake. Who oh, wait? And yet there are some people who like Mindy's strudel. Offhand, uh, which would you say he sells more of? The cheesecake or the strudel? Well, I never really gave it much thought, but uh, if everybody's like I am, I'd have to say Mindy sells more cheesecake than strudel. For how much? Huh? For how much? Why, Nathan, I never knew you to be a betting man. You always take your percentage off the top. Oh, well, I thought for old times' sake, I would give you a little action. <laughs> I will bet you $1,000 that yesterday Mindy saw more strudel than cheesecake. Nathan, let me tell you a story. Oh. When I was a young man about to go into the world, my father says to me a very valuable thing. He says to me like this, uh, son, the old guy says, I am sorry I'm not able to bankroll you a very large start. But not having any potatoes to give you, I'm now going to stake you some very valuable advice. One of these days in your travels, a guy is going to come up to you and show you a nice brand new deck of cards on which the seal is not yet broken. And this guy is going to offer to bet that he can make the jack of spades jump out of the deck and squirt cider in your ear. <laughs> it's a but son, do not bet this man, for as sure as you stand there, you will end up with an ear full of cider. Now, Nathan. I'm not saying you've been clocking Mindy's cheesecake. Oh, you don't think However, that I if you're really looking for some action, I'll bet you the same thousand dollars that you do not know the color of the necktie you have on. <laughs> well? Um... Mm. <laughs> no bet! <laughs> Blue! What a crazy color! <laughs> Nathan, I took Adelaide to the drugstore. Don't store bother me! Eyes. How you doing, Sky? Good. How's it with you, fellas? Not bad. Nicely, nicely. Uh, Nathan, we took Adelaide to the drugstore, and she said to make sure you pick her up at, after the show at the hot box. And don't be late. <laughs> yes, dear. I mean, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, dear. Oh, ho, ho. Nathan, you are trapped. In Adelaide, you're the kind of doll that is most difficult to unload. Oh, I don't want to unload her. I love Adelaide. And besides, uh, a guy without a doll. Well, if a guy does not have a doll, who would holler at him, huh? A doll is a necessity. Nathan, I'm not putting the rap on dolls. I'm just saying a guy should have them around when he wants them, and they're easy to find. But not dolls like Adelaide. Figuring weight for age, all dolls are the same. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Then how come you ain't got one? How come you're traveling to Havana alone without one? I like to travel light. But if I want to take a doll to Havana, there's a large assortment available. Not real high-class dolls. Any doll, you name her. Any doll, and I name her. Will you bet on that? Will you bet a thousand dollars that if I name a doll, you will take her to Havana tomorrow? You gotta bet. I name her. Her. Cider. <laughs> Someday, I'm going to take a pickaxe and rip up Broadway from end to end. They do that every day, dear. Do you take sinners here? Indeed we do. Sarah? How do you do? My name is Arvanathy. Arvide Abernathy. Uh, Sky Masterson. What's wrong? What is the trouble? My heart is heavy with sin. Oh, you poor man. I've wasted my life in gambling and evil betting, and I suddenly realize the terrible things that betting can lead to. Agatha, coffee. Didn't I see you a little while ago on Broadway? Possibly. Uh, I've been wandering around trying to get up the courage to come in here. And you're willing to give up gambling? Gladly. I never would have become a gambler had I not fallen in with evil companions who were always offering me sucker bets. Thank you. Here you go, young man. Thank you. Makes me feel real good just to talk to you people. You keep right on talking to Sister Sarah there. You'll be all right. I am sure glad you found us. The Bible says, seek and ye shall find. Very good. I wish we could reach more sinners like you. 
We're out there every day trying. Well, maybe you should try the nighttime. How's that? As a former sinner, I happen to know the best time to find sinners is between midnight and dawn. And you might even try holding an all-night session against the devil. Very good suggestion indeed. Thank you, Brother Masterson. You're welcome. Mmm, coffee is so good. I just can't understand why it isn't a sin. <laughs> Fine, old gentleman. I suppose he sort of uh, looks after you? We look after each other. Uh-huh. I suppose if either of you goes someplace, the other goes along? Well, yes, of course. Of course. Uh, here are two of our pamphlets I'd like you to read. They will give you a good deal of comfort. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we'll be holding a midnight prayer meeting on Thursday, which I'm sure you're, you'll wish to attend. I'm sure. Um, Miss Sarah, I hope you won't think I'm getting out of line, but uh, I think it's wonderful that a beautiful doll, a uh, nice-looking lady like yourself, is sacrificing herself for the sake of others. Uh, staying here, do you ever get to uh, go anyplace else? Uh, travel or something? I would like to go to Africa. <laughs> That's a little far. But there are some wonderful places outside New York by plane. Have you ever been in a plane? No. Oh, it's wonderful. Here is another pamphlet I think you should read. <laughs> Thanks. Of course, I'm going to need a lot of help from you. Uh, my heart's as black as two feet down a wolf's gullet. I will be speaking at the midnight prayer meeting. I need private lessons. Uh, so why don't we have a dinner or something? I think not, Mr. Masterson. Sorry. Just blossoming under the warmth of your kindness. <laughs> hey, that's wrong. What's wrong? It's not Proverbs, it's Isaiah. It's Proverbs. Sorry, no peace unto the wicked. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 21. Isaiah? Isaiah. <laughs> There's two things that have been in every hotel room in the country. Sky Masterson and the Gideon Bible. I must have read the good book 10 or 12 times. You've read the Bible 12 times? What's wrong with the Bible? Besides, in my line of business, the strangest information comes in handy. I once won five Gs in a parlay, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Tell me, Mr. Masterson, why are you here? I told you, I'm a sinner. You're lying. Well, lying's a sin. <laughs> Look, I'm a big sinner. If you get me, it's eight to five, the others follow. I mean, you need sinners, don't you? We're managing. Oh, let's be honest. This mission is laying an egg. Why don't you let me help you? I bet I can fill this place with sinners. I don't bet. I'll make you a proposition. So when is this big meeting of yours? Thursday? I guarantee to fill that meeting with one dozen genuine sinners. And I'll guarantee they'll actually sit there and listen to you. And what's my end of the bargain? Have dinner with me. Why do you want to have dinner with me? I'm hungry. Here. What's this? Sky Masterson's market for 12 sinners. If you don't think it's any good, ask anybody in town. I owe you one dozen sinners. I'll pick you up tomorrow for dinner at noon. At noon? Well, uh, take us a little while to go where we're going. Uh, where's that? To my favorite restaurant. Where is that? El Cafe Cabana in Havana. El Cafe Cabana Havana? Why, where do you want to eat? Howard Johnson's? Havana? Why not? The plane gets us there in five hours and back the same night, and the food is great. I now realize, Mr. Gambler, when you were describing the blackness of your heart, you didn't do yourself justice. And I now realize, Sister Sarah, no matter how beautiful a sergeant may be, she is still a sergeant. Please go away! Why don't you change your pitch, Sarge? Come to the mission, one and all. Except guys. I hate guys. I don't hate anybody. Except me. Oh, well, I'm relieved to know that it's just me personally, and not all guys in general. It's nice to know that somewhere in this world there's a guy that would appeal to the sergeant. I wonder what that guy would be like. He will not be a gambler. I'm not interested in what he will not be. I'm interested in what he will be. Don't worry, I'll know. For I've imagined every bit of him From his strong moral fiber To the wisdom in his head To the homey aroma of his pipe You have wished yourself a Scarsdale Galahad 
the breakfast eating Brooks Brothers type. Yes, and I shall meet him when the time is right. You got the guy all figured out. I have. Including what he smokes, all figured out, huh? All figured out. Along, I won't take a chance for all. He'll be just what I need, not some fly by night Broadway romance. And you'll know what a glance by his two pairs of pants. <laughs> talking about love. You can't dope it like that. What are you picking, a guy or a horse? I wouldn't expect a gambler to understand. You want to hear how a gambler feels about the big heart frog? No. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> Mine will come as a surprise to me. Mine, I leave to chance and chemistry. Chemistry? Yeah, chemistry. Suddenly I'll know when my love comes along. I'll know then and there. I'll know by the sight of her face. How I care, how I care, how I care. And I'll stop and I'll stare. And I'll know long before we can speak. I'll know in my heart. I'll know and I won't have to ask, am I right? Am I wise? Am I smart? And I'll stop and I'll stare at that face in the throne. Yes, I'll know when my love comes along, when my love comes <laughs> I'll uh, drop in again in case you want to take a crack at the other cheek. <laughs> Is this a Biltmore garage? Let me talk to Joey Biltmore. Who's this? 
Night in Detroit. This is Joey. What do you want? Joey, uh, listen, I'm calling about the, uh, the, you know. The what? The crap game. The what? The crap game. The what? The crap Don't game! Say that on the phone. Suppose the cops are listening. Sorry, the dice game. Listen, Joey, is it okay if I use your place tomorrow night? If I get a thousand bucks. I'll have it tomorrow. Then call me tomorrow. <sighs> Listen, Joey, if you're gonna take that kind of attitude, I'll have the game someplace else. And have it someplace else. Where else can I have it? Listen, Joey, the dough is guaranteed. Would I lie to you, huh? Yes. I'm getting it from Sky Masterson. How do you know? It's a bet I cannot lose. I bet him he could not take a doll to Havana. Why couldn't he? Because she ain't the kind of doll that goes to Havana. Where does she go? She don't go no place. That's how I know I'm gonna win. Don't be so sure. It ain't a horse. It's a doll. But Joey, I'm just trying Nathan, to... there will be no crap game here tomorrow unless I get my dough in advance. Joey, you've known me for a long time. That's why I want it in advance. Well, I can't talk no more. I gotta meet Adelaide at the hot box. Listen, just one more thing. Can I at least tell the guys that I'm gonna have the game at your place? Not till I get the dough. Fine, you'll get it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Ooh, I hope you get stabbed by a Studebaker. I heard that. And now, for the grand finale of the Round the World Review, we take you down on the farm with our star, Miss Adelaide, and the hot box, Farmerettes. <laughs> I love you, a bushel and a peck, a bushel and a peck, and a hug around the neck, a hug around the neck, and a bear. in my sleep about you. About you. Uh-huh, about you. About you. <laughs> I'm having trouble sleeping. Oh, I love you. I push a lend a peck. You bet your pretty neck. Oh, I do. Do, 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 Mr. Detroit. Good, good. There you go. Thank you. Hmm. I love you, a bushel in the peck. <laughs> that lousy Joey built more I'd like to wring his neck. Listen, Mr. Detroit. Miss Adelaide is fine too nice a doll to be putting up with that stuff. Do you understand me? <gasps> You're not going to be working here too much longer, I'll tell you that. <clears throat> <laughs> Adelaide, bitches! <laughs> How are you, handsome? Oh, fine, fine. What have you got there? A book. A book? Mm -hmm. You're always reading books. You're becoming a regular bookie. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan, darling, this is very interesting. Uh, the doctor gave it to me. I went to him about my cold. Oh, your cold. How is your cold? It's the same. Oh. So the doctor asked me how long I'd had it, and, and I told him a long time. And I said I thought it was on account of my dancing with hardly any clothes on, which is usually what I wear. So he said to read this book because he thinks it might be due to psychology. You haven't got that, have you? Nathan, this is the psychology the 
tells you why guiles do certain kinds of things. Oh, say, would it tell you what kind of a doll would go for a certain kind of a guy which you wouldn't think she would do so? What do you mean? Oh, I'm um, just for instance. Uh, there are certain guys you can almost bet wouldn't go for certain dolls. <laughs> they think no matter how terrible a fellow seems, you can never be too sure some girl won't go for him. Take us! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan, darling, starting with next week, I'm going to get a raise. Mm. So, with what I'll be making, uh, I wondered what you would think. Maybe we could finally get married? <laughs> of course we're going to. Um, sooner or later. I know, Nathan, but... <laughs> um, I'm starting to worry about my mother. Your mother? What about your mother? Wow, Nathan. This is something I never told you before. But my mother, back in Rhode Island, she thinks we're married already. Why would she take a thing like that? I couldn't be engaged for 14 years, could I? People don't do that in Rhode Island. They all get married. Then why is it such a small state? So anyway, I wrote her I was married already. Oh, you did, huh? Uh-huh. And then after about... Two years. We what after about two years? We had a baby. You, you told your mother we had a baby? I had to. Mother wouldn't have understood if we had it. What type of baby was it? It was a boy. I named him after you, Nathan. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, where is Nathan Jr. supposed to be now? Oh, he's in boarding school. I wrote mother he won the football game last Saturday. I wish I had a bet on it. But Nathan... Uh, that's not all, Nathan. Don't tell me he has a little sister. After all those years, <laughs> Mother believes in big families. Just give me the grand total. Five. Oh, you, you, Adelaide, your mother must be a glutton for punishment. So anyway, Nathan, um, you, you, we're going to get married, so it won't be a lie anymore. Adelaide, how could you do such a thing to a nice old broad like your mother? But Nathan, you don't even know. Mother. But I'll be meeting her soon, and what do I tell her? What do I tell her I did with the five kids? Traded them to the Phillies or something? <laughs> what are we gonna do? Well, we could get married. But marriage ain't something you just jump into like it was a kettle of fish. We ain't ready. I'm ready, Nathan. Oh, what do you think I got in this box? <laughs> Nathan, what do you think I got in this box here? Sally's Wedding Shop. I can't guess. It's a wedding veil. I've had it for three years. I won't show it to you, though, because it's bad luck. You want to see it? It's bad luck. So you see, Nathan, I've got the veil. All we need now is our license and our blood test. Our what? Our blood test. It's a law. Oh, what a city! First they close my crap game, then they open up my veins. Nathan, you're not planning on running that crap game again. No, no, Adelaide, how could you think a thing? Why do you think I give up the crap game to begin with? It's because I love you, and I want us two to be the happiest married couple that there is in the world. Oh. Anybody see an earring out here? I don't think so. Other, and we're gonna get married. I don't believe you anymore. But I promise it's true. You'll feel better tomorrow. Come on, cheer up, honey. Cheer up. Let's see that old smile. <laughs> That's my girl. I'll see you tomorrow. Here. The average 
unmarried female, basically insecure, due to some long frustration may react <clears throat> uh, with psychosomatic symptoms, difficult to endure, affecting the upper respiratory tract. In other words, just from waiting around for that plain little band of gold, a poison can develop a cold. <laughs> you can spray her wherever you figure the streptococcus I like. You can give her a shot for whatever she's got, but it just won't work. If she's tired of getting the fish eye from the hotel, like a bison can develop a cold. <laughs> Ooh. It says here, hmm, the female remaining single, just in the legal sense, shows a neurotic tendency. See note. See note. Oh, see note. Here it is. Chronic organic syndrome. Toxic hypertense involving the eye and the ear, the nose and throat. In other words, just from wondering whether the wedding is on or off, a Pisan can develop a cough. <coughs> you can feed her all day with the vitamin A and the bromo fizz, but the medicine never gets anywhere near where the trouble is. If she's tired of getting a name for herself and the name ain't his, a Pisan can develop a cough. <coughs> A Pisan can develop a grip <sighs> when they get on the train for Niagara. <laughs> she can hear change bells chime. Oh, the compartment is air conditioned and the mood sublime. Then they get off at Saratoga for the Can develop la grip, la grip, achoo, la post nasal drip with the wheezes and the sneezes and the sinus that's really a pip. <laughs> From the lack of community property and the feeling she's getting too old, a Pisan can develop a bad, bad I see, what are you looking at? Sky was just following Miss Sarah, and you should have seen her. She gave him a look that would have cooled off a moose at mating time. Oh. <laughs> Great. So long as he doesn't take that doll to Havana. Havana? He couldn't take this doll to New Rochelle. Uh. <laughs> hey, where's Nathan? He ought to start lining up the game. I don't know. He's probably out looking for Adelaide. <laughs> She's mad at him again. <laughs> that Miss Adelaide. She is always taking his mind off of honest work. Yeah, it's too bad a smart guy like Nathan has to go and fall in love with his own fiance. I mean, <laughs> Benny, that is his weakness. And we should be tolerant because I am told it is a worldwide weakness. Yeah? Look. What's playing at the Roxy? I'll tell you what's playing at the Roxy. A picture about a Minnesota man so in love with a Mississippi girl that he sacrifices everything and moves all the way to Biloxi. That's what's playing at the Roxy. What's in the Daily News? I'll tell you what's in the Daily News. Story about a guy who bought his wife a small ruby with what otherwise would have been his union dues. That's what's in the Daily News. What's happening all over? I'll tell you what's happening all over. Guys sitting at home by a television set who once used to be something of a rover. That's what's happening all over. Love is a thing that has licked them. 
And it looks like Nathan's just another victim. Yes, sir, when you see a guy reach for stars in the sky, you can bet that he's doing it for some doll. When you spot a John hanging out in the rain, chances are he's insane, as only a John can be for a Jane. When you meet a gent paying all kinds of rent, for a flat that could flatten the Taj Mahal. Call it sad, call it funny, but it's better than even money that the guy's only doing it for some dough. When you see a Joe saving half of his dough, you can bet they'll be making it for some dough. When a bum buys wine like a bum can't afford, it's a sense that the bum is under the thumb of some little broad. When a lazy mug lately out of the jug, and he's still lifting platinum fall the roll. Call it hell, call it heaven, it's a probable 12 to 7 that the guy's only doing it for some doll. When you see a sport and his cash has run short, you can bet that he's banking it with some doll. When a guy wears tails with the front gleaming white, who the heck do you think he's buying a drink on Saturday night? When the lazy mug lately out of the jug, and he smells of Vitalis and Barbasol. Call it dumb, call it clever, ah, but you can give odds forever that the guy's only doing it for some doll, some doll, some doll. The guy's only doing it for some doll. Well, we finally lost him. I do think you should have paid some attention to him. Yes, he attended every street meeting we had this morning. He must be interested in our work. Very. <sighs> oh, General Cartwright. Good morning, Sarah. Arbide. We didn't Good know morning. you were coming to town, General. I got in about an hour ago. I've spent the last hour looking for you. Oh, I'm sorry. We've been holding some extra Sarah. street meetings. Sarah. We at headquarters have come to a definite conclusion. We've decided to close this branch of the mission. Oh, no! Close the mission? Oh, but, General, please, someone can do good here. Oh, even if I can't. Sarah, there are so many other requests, so many other places where our work is really needed. But we're doing much better now. We've even announced a big meeting for tomorrow night. You've announced a meeting? Will anyone be here? Will anybody come? Pardon me, I couldn't help overhearing. General, my name is Sky Masterson, former sinner. Well, how do you do? How do you do? I'd like to protest the closing of the mission. I believe that Miss Sarah can uh, be a big success here. Well, I'm glad to hear that, but I'm not so certain. Might I make a suggestion? Yes. Why don't you come to the meeting tomorrow night and find out for yourself? Don't you think that would be a good idea? Well, if I thought the mission had a chance. General, I personally guarantee you one dozen genuine sinners. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! All right, does everybody have the carnations? Yeah. Remember, no one is allowed into the game without their red carnations. It's like a password. Okay, hmm? but where's the game? Uh, well, I... Oh, just a second. Nathan, Nathan, the guys are all here. Can I tell them the game's at the Biltmore Garage? Not yet. I gotta stall him for a while. Joey wants his dough first. But, but it's already 11 o'clock. The guys aren't gonna be here much longer. So sue me! I left nicely at my hotel to wait for the money from Sky. It'll be there. Where's the dough? It ain't come yet. But I told you to wait for it. I felt a little faint. I had to get some groceries. Get back to the hotel and wait for the money from Sky, and don't come back here without it, even if you starve to death. Okay, Nathan. Where's the game, Detroit? Hey, Harry the horse. How are you, Harry? How's everything in Brooklyn? Detroit, if you do not have no crap game, tell us, and we shall seek elsewhere for our entertainment. Now take it easy, Harry. I hope, Detroit, that you will not spoil our evening, inasmuch as I happen to be entertaining a very prominent guest. I think you might have heard of him. I would like you to meet. Big Julie from Chicago. <clears throat> I would like you to meet Big Julie from Chicago. Why? 
How do you do, Big Julie? Welcome to our fair city, in which I'm sure you know the heat is on. But just be patient, and you will get some action. So what do you say, Big Julie? Shall we stick around, or uh, shall we blow? I came here to shoot crap. Let's shoot crap. Sure, sure. <laughs> Nathan, if there is no crap game, I am sure Big Julie will be considerably displeased. And Big Julie does not like to be displeased, as you can find out from those citizens who at one time or another displeased him. Although I will admit it will be hard to find such citizens in view of the fact that they are no longer around and about. Now, uh, Harry, you don't think I would be so rude as to displease a gentleman here like Big Julie, do you? Big Julie, believe me when I tell you that when Nathan did... Troy. Nathan... <laughs> when Nathan Detroit arranges something, you can count on it that whatever well, I say. Well, well, well. <clears throat> An interesting gathering indeed. Looks like the cream of society. Angie the Ox, Society Max, Rusty Charlie, Liver Lips Louie, and hey, look, it's Harry the Horse, all the way from Brooklyn. And, uh, pardon me, I'm really bad with names, but. Your face, it looks familiar. Mind telling me where you're from? East Cicero, Illinois. Oh yeah, and what is it that you do there? I'm a scoutmaster. Well, don't ever help my mother across the street. This is lovely. You guys look like the male chorus from Blossom Time. What's the occasion? Oh, uh, well, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're... It's, it, it's a party. <laughs> Indeed, what kind of a party? Goodbye, girls! See you tomorrow! It, it's a bachelor dinner. Uh, Nathan's getting married. <laughs> what?! That's right, oh. Lieutenant. Nathan's getting married. Oh. It's a bachelor dinner. <laughs> well, they are the four. He's a jolly good fellow. Four, he's a jolly good fellow. Four, he's a jolly good fellow. Hello! Which nobody cannot deny. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Nathan, darling, I'm so thrilled. Why didn't you tell me? It was a surprise. <laughs> well, when I saw you standing there with all those fine gentlemen, <laughs> I never dreamed it was a bachelor dinner. I, well, I thought it was oh, a bachelor dinner. Yes, sir, yeah, a bachelor dinner. Bachelor Just bachelor dinner. think, after 14 years, I'm finally going to become Mrs. Nathan Detroit. <laughs> Time certainly does fly. Tell me, Nathan, when is the happy day? Oh, well, yes, we, Nathan, when will it be? Uh, well, we, we were... We I, Nathan, I, these good fellows are nice enough to throw you a bachelor dinner. You should at least give them the wedding date. Well, we need time for our license. And our blood test! Gee, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could be married tomorrow night, right after the show at the hot bar? Adelaide, we need time for a license and a blood test. You could elope. What? Yeah, you could drive down to California. What's the name of that town? Pimlico! <laughs> no, not Pimlico. It's, uh, San Dimas. They'll marry you right away. They don't ask for a blood test. <laughs> Ain't that unhealthy? No, Nathan, that's a great idea. Elope. I'll lend you my getaway car. Uh, my Buick. Oh, Nathan, Nathan, let's do it! Oh, oh we will, uh, <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> my congratulations to Nathan, and I just hope there is nothing in heredity. Oh, heredity, oh. Oh, that's, Nathan, that's... I got so many things to do before we elope. You'll be at the show tomorrow night? I'll have a table reserved, and I'll be all dressed up in whatever you will open. Oh, I'm so happy! <laughs> I ought to wire my mother! <laughs> Only what'll I wire her? Send a telegram and date it back. No, I better wait till we have five children. Oh. It won't take us long. <laughs> 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 Nathan, you are most indeed a lucky fellow. A beautiful doll indeed. Don't you agree, Big Julie? Tell me, how long you known the doll? Fourteen years. Let's shoot crap. Let's shoot crap. Nathan, Nathan, you have to find a place for the game. How can I? The money from Sky ain't come yet. Well, maybe it's not gonna come. Maybe he took the doll to Havana. He couldn't have.
She couldn't have gone. about a drink. A milkshake, please. Dulce de leche. What did you call them? Dulce de leche. Dulce de leche. What's in it? Oh, besides milk. Oh, sugar and a sort of native flavoring. What's the name of the flavoring? Bacardi. Very good. I'll have another one. Doesn't Bacardi have alcohol in it? <laughs> Take it easy there, slugger. It's over and you're still champ. <laughs>
Oh, mmm, mmm, that's nice. Oh. Uh, are you all right? Oh, am I all right? Ask me, how do I feel? Uh, Ask me now that we're cozy and clingy. Well, sir, all I can say is if I were a bell, I'd be ringing. From the moment we kissed tonight, that's the way I've just got to behave. <laughs> Boy, if I were a lamp, I'd light. <laughs> and if I were a banner, I'd wave. Ask me, how do I feel? Little me with my quiet upbringing. Well, sir, all I can say is if I were a gate, I'd be swinging. <laughs> If I were a watch, I'd start popping my <laughs> screen. Oh, if I were a bell, I'd go ding dong, ding dong, ding. <laughs> Ask me, how do I feel from this chemistry lesson I'm learning? Chemistry? Yeah, chemistry. Ooh. Well, sir, all I can say is if I were a bridge, I'd be burning. Yes, I knew my morale would crack from the wonderful way that you looked. Boy, if I were a duck, I'd crack. Or if I were a goose, I'd be cooked. Ask me, how do I feel? Ask me now that we're fondly caressing. Pal, if I were a salad, I know I'd be splashing my dressing. Ask me how to describe this whole beautiful thing. Well, if I were a bell, I'd go ding dong, ding dong, ding. <laughs> 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 Havana is so wonderful. Why don't we stay here for a few days and see how wonderful it really is? <laughs> I think we better hurry if we're going to catch the plane back to New York. I don't want to go back to New York. I'm taking you back. You're no gentleman. <sighs> Look, uh, a doll like you shouldn't get mixed up with a guy like me. It's no good. I'm no good. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why I took you to Havana? I made a bet. That's how I met you in the first place. I made a bet. How else does a girl get to meet a gambler? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, no. I gotta do what's right for you. Oh, you talk just like a missionary. <laughs> Thank you for bringing me back. I must have behaved very badly. <laughs> no, you were fine. What time is it? <laughs> I don't know. Four o'clock. Oh, this is your time of day, isn't it? I've never been up this late before. How do you like it? <sighs> so peaceful and wonderful. You're finding out something I've known for quite some time. My time of day is the dark time. A couple of deals before dawn Where the street belongs to the cop And the janitor with the mop And the grocery clerks are all gone And the smell of the rain wash pavement Comes up clean and fresh and cold and the street lamp light fills the cutter with gold that's my time of day my time of day and you're the only doll i've ever wanted to share it with me Obadiah. Obadiah, what's that? Obadiah Masterson. 
That's my real name. You're the first person I've ever told that to. I've never been in love before. Now all at once it's you. It's you forevermore. I've never been in love before. I thought my heart was safe. I thought I knew the score. But this is wine that's all too strange and strong. I'm full of foolish song, and out my song must pour. So please forgive this helpless haze I'm in. I've really never been in love. Before. I've never been in love before. Now all at once it's you, it's you forevermore. I've never been in love before. I thought my heart was safe. I thought I Sleep. Hello, Sarah, dear. Good morning, Brother Masterson. Good morning. We followed your suggestion and we stayed out, oh, excuse me, all night. We spoke to a lot of sinners. Where have you been, Sarah? I've been to Cuba. <laughs> You're even more tired than I am. I'm going to bed. Good night. <laughs> what the heck is this? Peyton, what, what is this? He asked us. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm losing 10 keys. Someone must have tipped them off. Man, I've seen a lot of strange things in my day, but this is the first time I've ever seen a floating crap game going full blast in a mission. Crap game? Sarah, you don't think I had anything to do with this, do you? Sarah? This never would have happened. I never should have gone with you. It was wrong. No, it wasn't. You went to help the mission. Did I? Will I see you tomorrow? Everyone is welcome at the mission. That's not what I meant. It's no good, Sky. You said it yourself. It's no good. Why not? What kind of a doll are you anyway? I'm a mission doll! <laughs> And now, for our featured number of the evening, the Hot Box proudly presents Miss Adelaide and her debutantes. He bought me the fur thing five winters ago, and the gloves the following fall. Then the necklace, the bag, 
the shoes <laughs> and the hats. That was late 48, I recall. Then last night when we had dinner, he tried to take back them all. And I said as I ran down the hall. Take back your mink, take back your piles. What made you think that I was one of those girls? Oh, take back the gloves, the shoes, and the hats. I may be down, but I'm not flat as all that. I thought that each expensive gift you'd arrange was a token of your esteem. But when I think of what you want in exchange, it all seems a horrible dream. So take back your mink to from whence it came and tell them to haul and to rise it for some other Mr. Masterson, will you be at Mr. Detroit's party this evening? Is he here? No, sir, Mr. Detroit's not been here yet this evening. Bring me a Ryan soda. As you wish, sir. Sky, have you seen Miss Adelaide? Huh? I bring her a message from Nathan. You know, I wish Nathan would bring his own message. What is the message? Where is Nathan? Uh, it's this way. Nathan's aunt in Pittsburgh was suddenly taken ill with a rare tropical disease. Hey, that's not bad. Anyway, Nathan has to fly away Nicely, to Pittsburgh. Nicely, what is the message? Where is Nathan? The crap game is still going on. Since last night? Well, Big Julie, being a large loser, does not wish the game to terminate. In fact, he's most insistent. So we find another place and the game goes on. So where is the game? Are you looking for some action? No, but I do want to talk to some of you guys. I, I gave my marker to someone, and I'd kind of like to clean it up before things get worse. And uh, I I'll, uh, I'll see you. Uh, I'll meet you outside, Sky. What about Nathan's message? Oh, uh, Miss Adelaide, Nathan is in Pittsburgh with a rare tropical ant. Goodbye. What? I, I don't understand. Sky, Nathan has to come here tonight. We're eloping to get married. Is it the crap game again? You know Nathan, why does it surprise you? But he promised to change. 
Change, change. Why is it the minute you dolls find a guy you like, you take him right in for alterations? What about you men, huh? Why can't you marry people like other people do and live normal like people? Have a home with wallpaper and bookends? No, Miss Adelaide. What do you mean, no? And guys like Nathan Detroit and Yes, Guy Masterson, we don't belong in a life like that. When dolls get mixed up with guys like us, it's, it's no good. I'll see you in a couple months. Oh, where are you going? I don't know. Las Vegas, maybe. I, I got a ticket on the late plane. Will you see Nathan before you go? Maybe. Well, tell him I never want to talk to him again and have him call me here. <laughs> Look, why don't you find another guy? Somebody, you'll find out. Yeah. In other words, just from waiting around at a table reserved for two, a person can develop the flu. The flu, a hundred and three point two. So much virus inside that a microscope slide looks like a day at the zoo. Just from wanting her memories in writing and the story her folks can be told, a person can develop a cold. <laughs> Not so fast, Sarah, not so fast. Oh, look, suppose we don't have this big meeting tonight. Suppose nobody's there at all. We'll explain to the general. Well, we won't have to explain. It'll be very clear. I just want to get away from this whole place to go someplace where... Where, where... what? All the sinners are respectable and well-behaved? You saw what happened last night. They gambled in our mission. And they'll be praying there, too. Even a man like Sky Masterson, he came seeking refuge. He, he came seeking me. Did you know that? <laughs> Are you kidding? I knew that the moment he started picking on you. But what I didn't know was how you were going to get stuck on him. Oh, I'll get over it. What do you want to get over it for? It isn't pneumonia. The man I love will not be a gambler. But if you love him enough... He will not be a gambler. Sarah, dear, I've always taken care of you. All I want is for you to be happy. Good evening, Miss Sarah. Well, Brother Abernathy, how goes it with the soul saving? Tonight's the big meeting, isn't it? Yeah, it's supposed to be. The general's coming. Oh, the she... general's a pretty tough doll, huh? Boy, yeah, there'll be a few people there. In fact, I don't think anybody's coming. I don't think Mr. Masterson is interested in our problems, Grandfather. We've got to hurry. You're forgetting something, Miss Sarah, and as a gambler, I'd never forget something like this. You hold my marker for 12 sinners tonight. Thank you, Mr. Masterson, but I'd rather you forgot about it. I cannot welch a marker. Mr. Masterson, last night, our mission was filled with your friends. Let us say we're even. And if you don't make good on that marker, I'll tell the whole town you're a dirty welcher. Nicely, where's the crap game? Sky, it's about 10 minutes walk from here. Which way? Right through here. <laughs> Wait a minute, where are you all going? Oh, I came here to shoot crap. Sorry, I don't want to go home. You see, Big Julie, the fellas are uh, slightly fatigued yeah. from weariness, having been shooting crap now for quite some time, namely 24 hours. I do not care who's tired. I'm out 25 G's, so nobody leaves. Uh, gentlemen, <laughs> I begin to see the logic of Big Julie. It is not that Big Julie is a bad loser. It is merely that he prefers to win. Right, Big Julie? Give me the dice. I'm shooting 500. All right, take 200. <sighs> I'm half dead. If you do not shut up, Big Julie will arrange your other half. <sighs> ha! 
And snake eyes, you lose. And fifty dollars for the house. But the dice are still yours. Shut up, another five. Another Take two hundred more. And Come here comes that big lucky uh, roll, and it's a uh, snake eyes again. <laughs> you lose. Tough luck, Big Julie. <laughs> well, that cleans me. But I ain't through yet. What? Now I'm gonna roll on credit. What? Uh, you, you, you see, Big Julie, the boys are pretty tired. Of course, me personally, I'm as fresh as a daisy. Uh -huh. Well, then I'll play with you. Me? Yeah, you. You've been raking down out of every pot. You must have by now quite a bundle. Well, being that I assume the risk, it is only fair that I should assume some dough. Detroit, I'm gonna roll you willy or nilly. And if I lose, I'll give you my marker. And if I lose? You will give him cash. Let me hear it from Big Julie. You will give me cash. Now I heard it. Here's my marker. Now put up your dough. Is anything wrong? No, 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 no. Uh, I owe you $1,000 signed X. How is it that you can write 1,000, but you cannot write your own signature? Well, I was good in arithmetic, but I stunk at English. <laughs> well, here, this will put you through Harvard. I'm shooting 1,000, and uh, to change my luck, I'm going to use my own dice. What? Your own dice? Yeah, I had them made for me, especially in Chicago. Uh, Big Julie, you cannot interpolate Chicago dice in a New York crap game. That is a breach of etiquette. Hey, show me where it says that in the Emily Post. <laughs> uh, not that I wish to seem petty, but may I have a look at these dice? Sure. But these... These dice ain't got no spots on them. They're oh, blank. I, I had the spots taken off for luck, but I remember where the spots formerly were. Oh, you are going to roll blank dice and call them from remembering where the spots formerly was? Why not? I see no reason. Here we go. Uh, ha! A five and a five. My point is ten. Well, I still got a chance. Ten Z. Come again, Z. I wish he'd fall down on his Enzy. Come on now. Ha! Ah! Ten, I win. A ten? Yes. A six and a four. Which is the six and which is the four? Either way. Now I'm shooting 2,000. Uh, I just remembered. I'm eloping tonight. Adelaide's waiting for me. Put up the 2,000. How about letting some of the other chaps in on the fun, eh? After I'm finished with you, get it up there. 2,000. Ha! Uh, yeah. Seven, I win. What a surprise. <laughs> hey, Detroit, I'm going to take it easy this time. What do you mean? I'm rolling one dollar. Ooh. I'll take all of it. Uh, ha! Oh, how do you like that? Snake eyes, I lose again. For this, I gotta bend down. Um, tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you a chance. I'm gonna roll for you 3,000. Three, jeez! 3,000, now get it up there! Wouldn't it be more convenient if I just put it in your put pocket? Put it down there, come on, let's go. Three G's. Uh, ha! Eleven, I win! That cleans me. <laughs> and now I will play with you guys. Hey, hey, no, wait a minute. You gotta give me a chance to get even. I will roll you now, but with my dice. All right, Detroit, that sounds fair. What are you gonna use for money? I will give you my marker. Oh. And you want Big Julie to put up cash? Well, Nathan done it. Sure I done it. What kind of deal is this anyway? Him with the no spot dice. Someone ought to knock the spots off of him. Hey. hey big, don't make Big Julie have to do something to you. Yeah, because I'm on vacation. Go ahead. Shoot me. Put me in cement. At least then I would know where I am. Here, I risk my neck to set up a crap game. I even promised to get married on account of it. Look how I wind up. Broke in a sewer. Believe me, my top friend from Chicago, there is nothing you could do to me that would not help cheer me up. Here they are, Sky. Good evening, gentlemen. Well, fresh blood. You you looking for some action? Not at the moment. But I would like to talk to some of you guys. Uh, we're not talking, we're shooting crap. I'm only asking for one minute. We are shooting crap here. It's about Miss Sarah Brown's mission. Uh, say, uh, can somebody tell who is this guy? This is the guy I was telling you about. Took the mission doll to Havana. Oh, oh, say, uh, fella. Why don't you go back to your praying tomato? Uh, you're slowing down the action around here. Oh, you want some action? You care to make a wager on a small proposition? 
uh, what's the proposition? Am I right-handed or left-handed? Well, how would I know that? I'll give you a clue. She just knocked that Whoa. Uh, uh, kindly return this to Sears Roebuck. Oh. Look, you guys. Tonight at Miss Sarah Brown's mission at West 409 49th Street, they're holding a midnight prayer meeting. And they promised to deliver some sinners. When it comes to sinning, most of you guys are high up among the paint cards. Hey, I ain't right gonna spend no evening in no hallelujah joint. You won't do it as a favor for me. Do it as a favor for yourselves. Whoa. I can guarantee you the air in the mission smells a lot better than it does down here. That's and maybe it would not hurt you guys to learn something else besides the odds of making a four the hard way. You've been reading the Bible way too much. I think so. so what? Maybe the Bible doesn't read as lively as a scratch sheet, but it is at least twice as accurate. I tried. I'll see you around, Nathan. Okay, Sky. Uh, Sky, listen. Uh, about the Havana business. I regret I temporarily do not have the thousand to pay you. You don't have to pay me. You won. But I thought you took the doll to Havana. You thought wrong. <laughs> oh, all right, Big Julie, get it up. I have now got dough to roll you again, but this time with my dice. Well, wait a second. With them dice, he cannot make a pass to save his soul. <laughs> What'd you say? I says, with them dice, he cannot make a pass to save his soul. Maybe I can make a pass to save his and, and yours and yours. What? I'm what? gonna roll the dice. What are you talking about? I bet each of you guys a thousand dollars against your soul. One thousand dollars cash against the marker for your souls. If I win, you show up at the mission tonight. Well, wait a second. Is that okay? Well, if you lose, we each get a thousand bucks. And if you win, we gotta show up at the Mission Dolls Cabaret? If I win, you show up at the Save a Soul mission. One meeting. Okay by me. Yeah, okay by me too. Bucks. <laughs> hey, why not? How about you, Nathan? A thousand dollars against your soul? Me? I don't even know if I got one. <laughs> <laughs> you got one someplace. How do you spell soul? S O U. Well, you asked. I mean, All right, okay. put down your markers. G give me the dice. Give me the dice. Give me room. Look, you see me roll for a hundred G's. I got a lot more than dough riding on this one. They call you Lady Luck, but there is room for doubt. At times you have a very unladylike way of running out. You're on this date with me. The pickings have been lush. Yet before the evening is over, you might give me the brush. You might forget your manners. You might refuse to stay. And so the best that I can do is pray. Luck be a lady tonight. Luck be a lady tonight. Luck, if you've ever been a lady to begin with, luck be a lady tonight. Luck, let a gentleman see how nice a dame you can be. I know the way you treated other guys you've been with. Luck, be a lady with me. A lady wouldn't leave her escort. It isn't fair. It isn't nice. A lady doesn't wander all over the room and blow on some other guy's dice. So let's keep the party polite. Never get out of my sight. Stick with me, baby. I'm the fella you came in with. Luck be a lady. Luck be a lady. Luck be a lady tonight. Luck be a lady tonight. Luck be a lady tonight. Luck if you've ever been a lady to begin with. Luck be a lady tonight. Luck let a gentleman see. Luck let a gentleman see. How nice a dame you can be. How nice a dame you can be. I know the way oh, you treat a lady. A lady. Be a lady with me. A lady wouldn't flirt with strangers. She'd have a heart. She'd have
have a soul. A lady wouldn't make little snake eyes at me when I bet my life on this roll. So let's keep the party polite. Never get out of my sight. Stick with me, baby. I'm the fellow you came in with. Luck be a lady. 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 prayer meeting. Big Julie, you give your maca, and if you welch, you will cause me no little embarrassment, and you do not wish to cause me little embarrassment. Uh, if it gets back to Chicago that I went to a prayer meeting, no decent person will ever speak to me again. Ooh, oh. Adelaide! Uh, oh, oh, what a coincidence! Uh, Adelaide did nicely explain to you about tonight. I hope you ain't sore about Please. it. Let us not have a folk as seen. After all, we are civilized people. We do not have to conduct ourselves like a swab. Adelaide, what is this? You are my doll. Your doll? Please, if that weren't so amusing, one could laugh at it. <laughs> Sweetheart, baby, how can you carry on like this over one lousy <gasps> elopement? Adelaide, please. It's no use, David. I have succeeded in your not being able to upset me no more. I have got you completely out of my head. Uh, <laughs> oh, Nathan. Adelaide, <laughs> baby, don't ever do that to me again. I can't stand it. Listen, we're going to get married. We'll have a home, a little white house with a green picket fence, just like the Whitney colors. Oh, but Nathan, we better do it soon. <laughs> I had another letter from my mother today asking a lot of questions, and, well, she put one in there for you, too. For me? Mm. A letter from your mother? <laughs> Dear son Nathan, this is my first letter to you, although you have now been married to my daughter for 12 years. But I feel like I know you from Adelaide's letters, and in my mind's eye, I can see you as you go down to work every morning at 7. What a responsibility it must be to be the assistant manager of an A&P. I'm not even the manager. I was going to promote you for Christmas. I know how hard you have to work to take care of your family, Adelaide, and the five children, and the one that's on the way. Uh, mother wanted me to visit her, so I had to tell her that. Don't she know I can't have six kids with what they pay me at the A&P? I am very proud to have you as a son-in-law. You are a good man, and I know you will always take care of Adelaide. I feel like a heel. Look, Nathan, darling, we can still make everything all right. Look, it, it's not even 12 yet. It's, it's 5 to midnight. Let's elope right now. Okay, Adelaide. Oh, <laughs> oh I can't. I can't. Why, I... why not? Oh. Nathan, why can't we elope right now? Because I... I gotta go to a prayer meeting. Nathan, this is the biggest lie you ever told no, me. No, 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 but I promise you it's true. Oh, you promise me this, you promise me that, you promise me anything under the sun, and you give me a kiss, and you're grabbing your hat, and you're off to the races again when I think of the time gone by. Adelaide, Adelaide. I think of the way I try. Adelaide. I can honestly die. Call a lawyer and sue me, sue me, what can you do me, I love you. <laughs> Give a holler and hate me, hate me, go ahead, hate me, I oh, love best you. best years of my life, I was a fool to give to all you. All right already, I'm just an old good Nick. All right already, it's true, so do. So soon be, soon be, <laughs> what can you do me? I love you. gamble you. it here, you gamble it there, you gamble on everything, all except me, and I'm sick of you keeping me up in the air till you're back in the body again when I think of the time gone by. Adelaide, Adelaide! I think of the way I tried. Adelaide! I can honestly die. <laughs> 
serve a paper and sue me, sue me. What can you do me? I love you. Give a holler and hate me, hate me. Go ahead, hate me. Then I love you. you wind up in jail, don't come to me to bail you. All right. I All right, already. It's true, so new, so soon me, soon me. What can you do me? I love you. You at it again, you're running the game. I'm not gonna play second fiddle to that. I'm sick and I'm tired of stalling around. And I'm telling you now, we're through when I think of the time gone by. Out of way, out of way. I think of the way. Oh, I'm trying. Out of way. Sue me, sue me, shoot bullets through me. I love you. It is now several minutes past midnight. Isn't anybody coming? Sergeant Sarah, something is very wrong. Maybe your lock watch is fast. I know what's wrong, General. I'm wrong. I've failed. I've spoken to these people day after day, but my words haven't reached. Welcome, brothers. Welcome. Come on, is. Is everybody here? Where's Nathan Detroit? Uh, present, present, here. Oh, there you go, Miss Sarah. One dozen or so assorted sinners. Sorry we couldn't clean him up before he brought him. Won't you gentlemen please sit down? No, I'm okay. Not be long at all. Sit down, all of you. <laughs> gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to the Save a Soul mission. Yeah, okay, yeah. Listen up, you guys. This is a mission, not Roseland. I suggest you do not indulge in any unpleasantness. Since I am required to depart for points west tonight, I have appointed Nathan Detroit Major Domo in my place. Nathan, if anybody does not conduct himself according to Hoyle, he will answer to Sky Masterson personally. And that means in person. What a remarkable young man. <clears throat> so remember that, you guys. <clears throat> Brother Abernathy? Your dice. Thank you. <laughs> Gentlemen, we are honored tonight. Our meeting will be conducted by the head of our organization, General Cartwright. Hey, it is on. wonderful to see our mission graced by the presence of so many evil-looking sinners. Hey, I'm not evil. Now, who would like to testify? Who would like to start the ball rolling by giving testimony? Uh, Benny, give testimony. I ain't no stool pigeon. Come now, brothers, I know it's difficult, but let one of you give testimony to the sin that is in his heart. Benny, tell him what a bum you are. Yeah, Benny! Okay. Well, um, I was a real bad guy and uh, a gambler, and um, I ain't going to do it no, all right? Thank you very much. There, don't you feel better now? I'm fine, thank you. Anyone else? Um, Big Julie. Oh. Well, uh, I used to be real bad when I was young, a kid. But ever since then, I, I've gone straight, as I can prove by my record. 33 arrests and no convictions. <laughs> <laughs> anybody else? Uh, Harry the horse. Uh, no, no, no. Harry no. the horse. Well, uh, when uh, Sky was rolling for our souls. Uh, I beg your pardon? Sky Masterson, he rolled each of us a thousand dollars against our souls. I'm afraid I don't understand. I do, General. He means the only reason they're here is because Sky won them in a dice game. Uh. How wonderful! This whole meeting, the result of gambling, just goes to show how good can come of evil. Sergeant Sarah, you've done a remarkable job. Hasn't seen that? Wait, wait a second, though. Thank I ain't you. finished with my testimony. My sins is that when Sky was rolling us for our souls, 
I wished I won the thousand dollars instead of having to come here. <laughs> now that I'm here, I still wish it. Ooh. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, we will now hear testimony from Brother Nicely Nicely Johnson. <laughs> Brother Nicely Nicely Johnson. Get up, you fat water buffalo. It, it happened to be kind of funny, like in a dream. That's it, a dream. Tell us in your own words. I dreamed last night I got on the boat to heaven and by some chance I had brought my dice along and there I stood and I hollered someone fade me but the passengers they knew right from wrong. Oh, the people all said, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. People all said, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. And the devil will drag you under by the fall so heavy you never float. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. I sailed away on that little boat to heaven and by some chance found a bottle in my fist and there I stood nicely passing out the whiskey but the passengers were bound to resist for the people all said beware people all said beware people all said beware, people all said beware. People all said beware. settle the ship and the devil will drag you under but the fancy tie on your wicked coat sit down, sit down, sit down And as I laughed at those passengers to heaven, <laughs> a great big wave came and washed me upon. And as I sank and I hollered, someone save me. That's the moment I woke up. Thank the Lord. I said to myself, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. I said to myself, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. And the devil will drag you under with a soul so heavy you never float. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. 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 Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. Sit down, you're rocking the boat. Anything we can do for you, Brother Branigan? Uh, perhaps you would care to give testimony. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my testifying in court, where I will testify that you ran a floating crap game here in this mission last night. Oh. Miss Sarah, you were standing there, and you saw them when they came out. Aren't these the fellows? I never saw them before in my life. That's a right broad right there. That's a right broad. Good. Now, officer, if you will excuse us, we would like to get on with our meeting. Uh, <clears throat> I never saw a crab shooter spend so much time in a mission. I guess that's what they meant by holy rollers. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Sarah. People, I also have a confession to make, and I've got to get it off my chest. We did shoot crap here last night. Yeah, that's true. And for that, we are all very sorry, ain't we, boys? Uh. I'm really sorry. But I also did another terrible thing. I made a bet with a certain guy that he could not take a certain doll away with him on a trip. This I should not have done. Although it did not do any harm as I won the bet. <laughs> you won the bet? Sure, the guy told me he did not take the doll. Well, I feel a whole lot better. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> Gentlemen, let's sing number 244, Follow the Fold. <laughs> sure. Follow Blow the fold and, and stray no more, stray no more. A pint and two kids for Miss Hope is here. Oh, hello. Oh, good evening. I'm Adelaide, a well-known fiancé. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, yes. When are you getting married? The 12th of never. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even get close enough to the church to be left at it. What will I ever tell my mother? Oh. oh, your mother will understand. Just tell her your engagement is broken. Uh, I I'm afraid that might confuse her. <laughs> Maybe I'll tell her Nathan's dead and see to it. Oh, you mustn't carry hate in your heart, Miss Adelaide. Try to be forgiving and understanding. In the Bible, it tells us in Isaiah. 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 <laughs> you got a boyfriend named Isaiah? <laughs> Isaiah was an ancient prophet. Oh, don't tell me. Nobody cries like that over an old guy. <laughs> Whoever it is, you got it bad. <laughs> you know, when I saw you the other night with Sky Master Santa Claus. <laughs> oh no. Not Sky! You're not in love with Sky! <laughs> oh, uh, you, you poor thing. I thought I hated him. I thought I hated Nathan. I still think I hate him. That's love. Can't men like Sky ever change? For 14 years, I tried to change Nathan. I always thought how wonderful he would be if he was different. Yeah, I've thought about Sky that way too. I sat and pictured him by the hour. <laughs> Nathan, my Nathan, in a home, in the country, happy. Gee, wouldn't it be wonderful? Wouldn't it? Oh, if only Sky. They just can't change. A little while ago at our prayer meeting, there were a lot of gamblers there who acted as if they may change. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't... Gamblers at your prayer meeting? Was Nathan Detroit there? I'm sure I heard that name. A, a, a darling little fellow with a cute mustache? I think so. How do you like that rat? Just when he should have been lying, He's telling the truth! Well, I'm glad I'm through with him. And you ought to be glad you're through with Sky, too. I am. Hmm. What, are we crazy or something? At Wanamaker's and Saxon Klein's, a lesson I've been taught. You can't get alterations on a dress you haven't bought. At any vegetable market from Borneo to Nome, you mustn't squeeze the melon till you get the melon home. You've simply got to gamble. You get no guarantee. Now doesn't that kind of apply to you and I? You and me. Whatever. Why not? Why not what? Marry the man today. Trouble though he may be. Hm. Don't let him get away. Crazy and wild and free. Marry the man today. Rather than sigh and sorrow. Marry the man today and change his ways tomorrow. Marry the man today. Marry the man today. <laughs> Maybe he's leaving town. Maybe he's leaving town. Oh, no. Oh, don't let him get away. Don't let him get away. Hurry and track him Come down. Come on, track him and marry the man today. Give him the girlish laughter. <laughs> Give him your hand today and save the fist for after. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, slowly introduce him to the better things. Respectable, conservative, and clean. <laughs> Reader's Digest. Guy Lombardo. Rogers Pete. Oh, go! Galoshes. Ovaltine. Oh, but marry the man today. Handle it meek and gently. Marry the man today and train him subsequently. <laughs> Carefully expose him to domestic life. And if he ever tries to stray from you, have a pot roast. Oh, have a headache. Mm. <laughs> have a baby. Have two, six, nine. Stop. Marry the man today. Rather than sigh in sorrow. Marry the man today and change his ways.
paper. Nathan, come on! We're waiting on you! Just a minute. I'm waiting on the lieutenant. Thank you, lieutenant. You're welcome. Close up the new sad. We're getting married! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have this wedding, or ain't we? I paid half a buck for this mesanthorium. Nathan, come on! Oh, gee, Adelaide, you picked the busiest time of day. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, uh, guys, oh, where's the wedding? So handsome, yeah. yeah? Where is the wedding? Holy smoke! What, what's the matter? I didn't get a place for the wedding! Oh, what about the Biltmore Garage? Brothers and sisters, life is one big crap game, and the devil is using loaded dice. Where, where's the crap game? Where's it? Brother Masterson? Yes, Brother Detroit? Say, uh, can we get married in your mission, Adelaide and I? Certainly. I married Brother Masterson and Sister Sarah here. I'd be glad to do the same for you. <laughs> Congratulations, Nathan. I'll lay you eight to five. You'll be very happy. <laughs> what Obadiah means? Is. Oh, he wishes you every happiness, and so do I. <laughs> Thank you very much. I know we're going to be happy. We're going to have a little place in the country, and Nathan will be sitting there beside me every single night. <laughs> ha, when you see a guy reach the stars in the sky, you can bet that he's doing it for some love. Thank you. 